Welcome to my AI channel. I'm going to try to show you how to do AI long-term memory with the large language model. So this starts off with the smart context feature not supported anymore in Silly Tavern. So it's a different workflow now. I'm going to try to add a lot of information to my AI brain there. And I'm going to show you that, you know, if you ask it question from a long time ago, it's going to show you the correct information. And bonus round, I'm going to show you a bit of the AI uh, stable diffusion image uh, analysis there. So let's get into the why, what is the goal here, right? The goal here is to create a personalized AI assistant that evolves with me via long-term memory for years of discussion with it. All in local on my desktop, so nothing cloud here, everything local. So that's a key element here, and that's the goal of what we're trying to achieve here. So let's start off with uh, a workflow. Uh, how do we see this as, you know, a big picture there? So we can start off with the uh, the chat logs, right? So we're chatting with the bot there. All these little chat logs that you do daily, we summarize them. So we, you know, uh, compress them, uh, take out the most important element and put it into little boxes. And we pull this all into a database that will be embedded, that is going to be vectorized there. So basically, every little box has some some uh, some numeric value that represents it, so that when we do some query, when we ask question, it's going to be able to match the words that we're questioning with the information that it has in the database there. So that's the, the brain of our operation there. Every data is stuck there with that embedding of, of numbers there. And when you do a query, you know, when you ask a question later on, then it's going to pull the information out of that database based on that, you know, embedding, numbering, matching there. So that's in sum is the big picture of how this workflow works. So uh, to sum it up there, once you do all this, that information there, I mean, going through these four steps, uh, we can divide it into four steps. All that information is then taken and brought loop back into the initial phase where you continue to summarize it and then add it to the database again and ask question again there. So this loop back permits it to increase the memory of your of your AI chatbot there so that it gets to know you over time. So number one, the chat log. Number two, summarize it. Number three, you have the embedded database. And number four, you do the query extracting the data there and you go back to number one. So that's the major workflow. Um, let's go step by step. Every step there has uh, specific uh, things to, to understand. And we're going to go through some uh, actual execution, actual runtime of it. So you can see how that runs in, uh, uh, in execution there. So step number one, chat log. So that's the, probably the easiest step there. Uh, if once you have the Silly Tavern set up there, you just chat with it, right? So you just uh, have discussion day to day with it. There. It's important to choose the right large language model. Um, it's important to add some information so that, you know, your AI has some some data there. And uh, let's uh, give it a try, right? So we can see here in my uh, um, uh, text generation UI, web UI there, I'm loading a model. You can see the model there called... Uh, Lone Striker. It's one of the model from many other models there. You pick the one that makes sense for you. Um, I have another video that showcase how to choose a large language model there based on your need and your hardware configuration. I'm going to fast forward the load there so that you can see the AI being loaded. And there you go. It's successfully loaded. It took some uh, GPU VRAM memory. And that's quite fine. And... Uh, now we're going to go toward the uh, Silly Tavern side, where we're going to be discussing with it there, with that model that we loaded. So we can see here I'm connecting to the uh, to the text generation there, Web UI. So it's connected with that Lone Striker. Now that the model is connected to the Silly Tavern, I'm loading a profile. In this case, uh, I'm loading the default Serafina there. So that's the default uh, character. It could be any other character, right? So that's fine. I'm going to be loading the author's node. So this is something important there because the author's node for me enables me to enable, disable uh, some information about that uh, that uh, character there. So uh, with that checkbox, I can enable, disable 
easily. And you can see here all the information I put in there for the character. Uh, most of it is pretty default, but I added a few elements in there to give it some characteristic, right? some personality, right, uh, with some score in there from 1 to 10. Um, and I'm looking at that data banks right now. So this is the key element here where instead of smart context, I'm using the data bank. Um, for now, as a first test, I'm not adding any information, right? So I'm going to just ask question without, without having any data bank, meaning that there's no, there's no extraction of information there because there's no information. And I ask it, uh, how are you doing? And, uh, my favorite movie is the matrix, right? So that it knows, oh, the matrix, that's my favorite movie. Now, once I have the information set up there in the chat, I'm going to save it, right? I'm going to compress it into a summarized version so that, you know, it, it really just keep the key element there and not, and not the whole, whole chat log, right? So summarizing it there, um, I'm going to add it to a big text file. I'm going to add a, a date to it there so that it, it has some, some dated information. You can see here my summarized uh, query there that basically... Just ask it, please take all the information in the chat and put it into a summarized version. Uh, keep in mind the summarized version seem bigger than the actual chat there, but, but you have to understand that, you know, in a the chat there that, you know, let's say you did it for the whole day. Um, usually it's a much more than what I just put there, but uh, it gives you an idea, right, of what the summary can be there. And in this case, it generated a bit too much of summary. It was some redundancy there. I'm going to copy it, but I'm going to remove the part that's becoming redundant there. It was uh, summarizing more than once. So I copy it. I'm going to bring it to my uh, generic notepad text file there. I'm going to paste it in there. And I'm going to just remove the uh, redundancy of it there. Uh, it doesn't always do it uh, with redundancy. I mean, it depends, right? So whenever you generate a summary, look at it, see if it makes sense. If not, then regenerate it again or remove whatever that doesn't make sense there, right? So without going and changing too much things there, I mean, this is the minimum there. Uh, as you can see here, this represents my, my memory, right? My chunk of memory there. Uh, I'm uh, removing all the little spaces, right? So that, uh, and, and sorry, I'm removing all the... Uh, the new lines, right? Because I want it to be a chunk, and the new line represent the uh, a new chunk, basically, right? A new a new section. So everything here will be done within uh, uh, the same line without any uh, new lines there. For AI, you know, it, it it's fine. It doesn't need to have all that separation there. Uh, for us, it's a bit harder to to read, but for AI, it, it's quite fine there right? to have it all in within the chunk there. So there we go, and I added the date there. Again, we're not really using it for now, but I'm sure in the future that's going to be important to have. So I'm adding it. And in any case, it's always good to, when I have uh, all these information there, to go and search. It's much easier there. And I'm saving that to a text file, it's just a generic text file. So that is done. I have my memory summary into a text file. Now uh, let's try to... Uh, to do to the go to the next step, which is embedding the vector database, right? So now we want to take that chunk of information there and put it in that database that has some encoding, some numbering encoding. A vector database, you know, I added to a a silly tavern data bank and I have to config the different setting so that we can run it with that information there. So first things first, I'm gonna do a new chat, right? So that it doesn't remember whatever I gave it there as information in that chat there. So now it's a brand new chat. It doesn't know anything about me. It doesn't know I, I, I like the Matrix movie. Um, again, because it's new chat, I have to, uh, oh, I can, I can do it through that way also. But um, within the new chat, I'm gonna go and and add that that file, that, that memory file. Well, but you know what? As a first test, let's showcase that, you know, if I ask the question, what is my favorite movie? It shouldn't know, right? It should not know that my favorite movie is The Matrix, right? So here we go. It tells me a bunch of different movies there, Avatar, The Rings, and so on. But uh, um, it does not know I like The Matrix, right? Because it doesn't have that information. It couldn't, it couldn't, it couldn't just have guessed it, right? So now I'm going to open the database. So this is a new feature that's replacing the smart context there. Um, I'm adding the, uh, the memory file that we created. Right, so the Sarah memories there, right there. 
I'm adding it and you can see it was uh, added to the to the data bank which is great and now I'm gonna go to the settings to uh, configure this now in that two little blocks there, there's the vector storage. And you can see here, we need to remove the extra or not select the extra in the vectorization source and choose the transformation local. Um, also the setting there, query only one message, score, put it to 0.2. I can go into more details later on, but you know, those are the right settings. Enable for files, you have to enable for files because if you don't, it's not gonna read your file. Uh, put those values for the threshold, for the chunk size, chunk size you don't want it to be too big, you know, uh, so that it reads that chunk that you put, but too small and it won't you won't take it. It will be truncating it, right? So you just need the right value there. Retrieval chunk 44. Uh, that's a question of how many VRAM do you have there? So uh, 44 for me, for my VRAM works. If you have less VRAM, you can put it much smaller, and that's it. With that, you have set up everything. Now let's go to the exciting step, which is the query with the rag there, which is the retrieval uh, augmentation generation, right? So now when you ask the question, because it has that database and the vectorization enabled there, it will go pull all the right piece of information, right, from that database. So this is the key time. So now again, we are have everything uh, enabled. We're going to vectorize it. So this is a yeah, at the time where it's going to take that text file and it's going to create the encoding there for each of the chunk. In this case, there's only one chunk, but it's fine there. Uh, it's just a, a example, right? So now that it has that in the database and it has the uh, vectorization with the embedding, the coding. Now let's, uh, let's delete this answer and ask the question again. What is my favorite movie, right? So... I'm going to do a regenerate, or I can just click the little thing there to regenerate. There you go. And magically, it knows that it's the matrix, right? And again, it's just, just a fluke, right? So we can go and, and look into the details of how it got to that point, right? So let's click on the, on the prompt there. It gives you more information of, you know, what was the prompt. And in there, you can look at the full prompt there where you can see the actual information from the data bank was added there, right? There was a bunch of other information here, but the key element here is the, here, right there, right? The, the data bank information there. So it was able to pull that out. And because it pulled that out, it knows, oh, uh, we talked about before about the matrix. The loopback, which is the step four plus, is basically to bring that new chat that we just created together there and then bring it back into the beginning, right? So this new chat that we just did, nothing special there we just have to summarize this right this becomes the new chat there so we have just have to summarize this and then once summarize it then it can go into the data and the data bank right uh, just before doing that let me just add extra information just to show that i know there's a a addition there right so i'm telling it that i adore reading the um the code and novels there so that's new information that you know it, it could not have guessed but now i'm adding that to the uh, to the chat and at the end, you know, I'm just going to fast forward here. I'm going to summarize the whole thing, right? So a summary again, it shows the whole discussion that we just went through. And it logged the fact that I love Conan novels, right? That, that's a key element there, there. That becomes a new uh, summary, which uh, then I'm going to, I'm going to add it again to my uh, Sarah data uh, memories right so i'm going to do a new line now right so this is a key element there to do a new line um i'm going to paste the date i'm just going to update the date a bit there assuming it's a new day right because usually i do one summary per day uh, chapter but you don't have to right i mean you know, whenever whenever you feel there's enough you know information there um, you can do a summary it's it's up to uh, up to you there and you can see here I'm doing the same thing. I'm taking the whole list, but I'm removing all the little new lines so that it becomes one chunk. And then there you go. There's two chunk right now in this, the, the text file in the memory. I'm going to do a new chat again. Right. So the new chat is to make sure that this is starting fresh with no information. It does not know, know anything there. Um, I'm enabling the author's note just to have some personality there it's not uh, um, obligated but you know it makes the conversation much more interesting there and uh, i'm gonna go and make sure again 
I set properly all the settings here, just as I mentioned before. Everything is already set up. And then I'm going to add the file again. The same file, but now the file has more memories, right? Because now we have two chunks. It knows about the matrix. It knows about Conan. So I'm loading that file again, which is the updated file. Um, we can even inspect, inspect it, right? Click the little magnifier and see the content. But uh, let's try to, uh, to vector, well, in fact, let's vectorize it so that, you know, it convert that files into our database and it has all the embedding it has all the encoding the number encoding so that when you put some words in the query it knows which which uh, um, a chunk to go look for again right now there's very little chunk right so it's going to probably take both of them there or, or more or less but when you have like thousands and thousands of chunks there because you went through this for months and months well it cannot take everything so it has to choose, and this is where the embedding becomes very important there. It has to choose the chunk that is the most related to your question, right? See, in this case here, I'm asking it about the book, and it is able to give me the answer of the Conan story, right? It knows that I like the Conan uh, novels there. And if I, again, ask about the movie, it, it tells me, yes, I know about the, the Matrix, right? So, again, all of this is because of that... Uh, that uh, from again right when we look at it we can see it, it went and extracted those memory there in the uh, in the data bank right again this is a small example keep in mind when there's a thousand and hundreds of thousand of these junk uh, the ai would have to choose and that embedding and the scoring becomes very important there so uh, let's uh, wrap it up with a little bonus section here which is the AI uh, stable diffusion analysis image there, right? So you can see the nice background I have uh, there. It was something I generated uh, quite some time ago when I was playing around with things there. And you can see the image itself contained tiny little, you know, uh, extra image there. Um, it was a uh, uh, strange behavior when I was doing it there because, you know, I was trying to do upscale and it was generating little squares as it does upscale little pieces of the image for the upscale and by doing that every uh, square that it was doing uh, it was generating itself the the character that was trying to prompt for you can see here even the hidden there right the face right right in there in the hair uh, there was tons of little of these things there i'm not going to show everything there you can see if i zoom uh, zoom around there you can see different cases there's even a little lion there so that, that was <laughs> special and I'm going to end here with a very close up view of the uh, eyes there, right? So um, you can see all the detail sharp uh, uh, in the image there because simply I was doing upscale. So that was fun to uh, to share. Hopefully you like that, uh, that little video that I did there, which shows how to do this there, how to do the uh, rag and and uh, get the information and the the long-term memory and re reminding again these are the four steps i'm going to be detailing a bit more of each tell each step in later video because for each step there's really ways to improve the efficiency of what i'm doing the speed the uh, the quality of the result there there's a lot of things we can do there but for now i'm showing you the basic you know what you can set up to at least get it to work there thank you very much and uh, I'll see you around in the next video. Bye-bye.